Hey everyone, hi, welcome back to this master series on learning coding patterns. In this series, we are going to learn coding patterns that can help us in acing our technical interviews as well as coding competitions. In the previous video, we learned about sliding window approach and we solved one question. Today, we are going to learn, uh, we are going to solve another question using sliding window approach and we are going to learn how we can tackle this kind of question using sliding window approach. The aim is pretty simple. Pick one approach and practice uh, that approach on a few questions so that we can get a good grip on that particular uh, approach. Once we will feel okay, now we are uh, we have practiced enough and we have developed some sort of understanding and a good grip on this approach, then we will move forward with another approach. Okay, so what uh, is today's question so today's question is 643 of lead code uh, the question is maximum average, average sub array one so in a summary in a nutshell what the question is asking the question is asking us to uh, calculate the maximum average of all the sub arrays of size k in a given array so this is a given array of one to nine and what the question is asking us that we make a size k sub array for example here the k is 4 so we are going to make uh, sub arrays of size k and we are going to calculate the average of these four elements then we will note that average down then we will move forward and we will calculate the average of next four elements then we will further move ahead and we will calculate the average of next elements so on and so forth till we are done with uh like we're calculating the average of last four elements okay so uh, let's discuss the naive approach first and then we will use the sliding window approach so what the naive approach will be here that we will stand here and we will look at these next three items so in total they will become four and we will calculate the sum of these four numbers and divide that sum with uh, four why four because the average formula is sum of x divided by n okay so n is number of elements which is four and what is going to be the sum of x which is the sum of these first four elements 10 okay 2 plus 1 is 3 3 plus 3 is 6 and 6 plus 4 is 10 so the final average of first four elements is going to be 2.5 okay so we are going to wrote down 10 here to show the sum and we are going to wrote down 2.5 here because at the moment this is uh, our max average because we have just seen the average of first four elements now what about next thing so in naive approach what we will do we will start from here and we will count till here okay let me remove this first part so now uh, we will again uh, add these four numbers 2 plus 3 then plus 4 then plus 5 and we will again calculate the sum and then uh, divide the sum with 4 so that we can identify the next average of these four values now here if you observe the pattern this pattern is naive approach that's why this pattern is inefficient why this is inefficient simply because we are calculating the sum of these elements which we have already calculated when we were dealing with the first sub array okay so why just because of this additional one element why we are calculating the sum of these three elements again so this is the inefficiency of the naive approach now if we introduce the sliding window approach what will happen that we will elim we will eliminate this repeated uh, calculation of those elements sum that we uh, that that are overlapping in the uh, sub arrays so how we are going to do this we are simply going to take this window so why Ali you are placing this window from two why not from one because we have already calculated uh, one's average right here this is 2.5 so now let's uh, so now what we are doing we are using the sliding window and in this video 
and in this window what we are doing we are using the sum of these three elements and we are simply eliminating uh, this element from the previous sum so the previous sum of these four elements was 10 now Ali as I have said uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to remove this element and since now we are this thing is in green box which means we are just adding the new element that's it so uh, using this approach what will happen is that we will save the computational power by not repeatedly calculating those elements that are overlapping in the sub arrays so in this way we will save quite a lot of computational power so here rather than traversing over these four elements what we are doing we are just uh, doing this in o of one uh, complexity so here just uh, calculate it 10 minus 1 is 9 9 plus 5 is 14 okay so the new sum is going to be 14 of these uh, of these four elements let me clear this up to make it apparent of these four elements you see this is the efficiency that rather than calculating their sum as well we are just utilizing the previous sum but and then we have removed the uh, value that we have already seen and we are adding the value that that is new and that's and that's how we are going to keep moving the window how okay so uh, i okay so if we go for 14 divided by 4 so this is going to be around 3.5 so what uh, so now in the next step we are going to match okay 3.5 is bigger than 2.5 and we have to identify the maximum average so we will simply come here and we will remove this and we will write 3.5 here but after doing this what we are going to do we are simply going to slide our window to the next element we are going now we are going to cancel out this initial value from the previous sum which was 14 and and now we are going to add this new value which is 6 and this will give us the new sum we will then divide it again by 4 which will give us the new average we will then again compare the new average with the previous average and then which average will be which whichever average will be larger we will substitute that average here in order and just by following this particular order what we are going to do what we are going to get we are going to get the maximum average okay Ali so I hope like um, in this way uh, sliding window approach and sliding windows implementation over this question is clear now let's look at the uh, solution so how to solve this question so here we are here we are on uh, question number 643 on lead code and now let's code the solution how to solve it using the sliding window approach so as we discussed earlier that we need to calculate the first window sum the 10 so how we are going to calculate it we are going to use the function called sum in python and then what we are doing we are going to do we are going to use this nums array and we are going to slice it till the kth uh, like the k minus one element so if uh, if i am using k here as four so what will happen is that uh, if you type if you understand the indexing part there will be zero one two three so k minus one element okay so uh, we are slicing till this element so we will get the four elements window since our k is four okay and then what we are going to do we are going to calculate the average of this window and how to calculate the average as discussed earlier we are simply going to divide this window sum this window sum with k okay summation of x divided by n this is the average formula so summation of the summation of these first four elements divided by 4 
so we will get the initial values average and like initial four elements average uh, this way then we are going to use another variable called max average what this max average will uh, will have it will uh, it, it will have the maximum average of two sub arrays at the moment we have just calculated the uh, uh, we we have just calculated the first initial sub arrays average so that's why we are going to write down window average okay now let's write the loop that will help us in traversing so for i in range length of nums now i am going to minus k from it so why early length of nums minus k why not to traverse to all the elements simply because we are creating a window of a particular size here we are creating a window of four size so that's why we want to stop at such element that can help us in getting four elements okay we do not want to cross pass this so that's why we are uh, minusing we are subtracting k and here we and now what we need to do we need to calculate the window sum but how we are going to windows uh, calculate the window sum so this window sum is going to be the window sum of a new array okay uh, the array from after the initial one so we will use the window sum that we calculated previously which was 10 so here 10 will come and then we are going to subtract the initial element which is one so and uh, this 10 i'm referring to the uh, to the example question that i created okay so uh, so now if we just come here even so what i'm doing i am uh, i have calculated some and i am now removing the first value and then i am going to use the window and then i'm going to add the sum of the new uh, i'm going to add the new uh, element so first remove the initial value and then add the nums this should be nums and then i am going to add the new value i plus k so ali why i plus k because if you uh, initially in range it will start from zero so if you start from zero so zero plus four means k is four at the moment so uh, zero plus four is four so zero one two three and four so what it will do initially we calculated the sum of these four elements now due to plus k it will add this 50 into our into our window but we have uh, also removed one from it so we are uh, uh, we are going to uh, we are going to calculate the sum of this um, this sub array how by utilizing the sum of the previous one the previous four elements removing one from it and adding the new element okay 50 so now we are going to type window average again how to calculate the window average by win by dividing window sum with k now now here's the max average uh, logic so as we discussed earlier uh, that we need to constantly compare the new windows uh, average with the previous windows average if the new windows average will be uh, greater than the previous one we will update the max average with uh, that greater number if it will not be the greater if it will not be greater than the previous one we will just simply leave it uh, max average value will be the previous one's average we will just simply leave this uh, leave uh, that average and we will move ahead with a new sub array so here i am going to type max and here i am going to type max average and then window average so here you you can see that initially in the max average was the average of first four elements but now 
in the window average it contains the average of next four elements so what this max function will do it will compare both of them and whichever will be greater it will assign the number to max average and now lastly we are going to return the max average variable why because in the question they are asking for the maximum average of all the sub arrays in a given array okay so let's run this code by clicking on run and here you can see accepted if i'll submit it click click on submit and here you can see the code has been submitted okay awesome so that was that was uh that was a second video on sliding window approach i hope now the sliding window and its implementation will be much more clear than before um, i have already shared this code plus this questions link in the github uh, folder of question number 643 like this is the repository lead code dash python that i have created and in which i have in, in this repository i have created this folder 643 maximum average sub array so here you can find this readme that will that contains the link to the question the question short form understand like uh, the approach that i have used uh, the intuition with the code as well as the time complexities and the technique that i have used this question belongs to array so that's why i have put it into the array folder so the time complexity is o of n minus k so n was the total number total length of air nums but I am minus in K, so that's why our code, our for loop will only traverse to the n minus K elements. And then um, here, um, space complexity is O of one because I am not using um, any sp uh, like uh, I am just using variables, so that's why it is O of one. I am not creating any data structure that will increase with the increase in the input size so uh so that was a second video i hope you liked it if you uh, if you like uh, this approach and if you want to support please do uh, click on like button and subscribe and please share it uh, if you if you think that this video can help with uh, it, that can help other people who are learning data structures in your in your domain in your friend circle Thank you so much for your time. I will see you tomorrow with a new video and a new question. See ya. Take care.